I grew up in the mountains of Virginia, home to most of my childhood and part of my adult cycle of the creature I have become. The time I was not in Virginia, I was on the move with either my family or traveling myself in search of something. Over the years I have collected a vast amount of stories and memories from people I have met along the way. But I haven't told many from my home and sometimes a man in a bunny suit breaks down in front of your house and politely asks you for a kitchen knife to jimmy his truck. More on this in a moment, little events like this brings back stories our parents used to keep us in bed at night, either ones they made up or were told themselves. The 1990s presented some incredible tales that ranged from the fascinating to downright bizarre throughout many parts of Appalachia. This decade was also known for the introduction of several new mind-altering substances it remains to be known as to what extent these two facts are related. At the forefront of the unsolved mysteries, made for TV, hair-raising mountain stories was Virginia's 9th Congressional District a region known locally as Southwest Virginia. And right smack dab in the middle was the half-mad half-paranoid person that has decided to amass this story for you on this rather odd night. Though the vast majority of Mountain Virginia's paranormal stories were limited to UFOs, especially silent and stealthy black triangles that the Air Force swore did not exist the region also showcased a handful of more spine-tingling claims. Many of which were gospel to my mother and the stories she would whisper in my ear at night, if she had decided to let me sleep in my own bed. I don't want to fool you or mislead you into thinking I had a nice mother, I didn't. At the top of the many twilight tales to spring forth from this decade was one woman's claim to have spotted a mysterious black devil monkey in Roanoke, Virginia, in 1994. According to multiple sources, an Ohio woman was driving through Roanoke around 2.30 a.m. when a construction detour sent her down a dark two-lane country road. As she drove the wilderness terrain of southwest Virginia, a creature that looked like a hybrid wolf monkey leaped in front of her car. The creature was all black with very short sleek fur, pointy ears and had a long thin tail. She described it as cat-like, and yet not like any cat she had ever seen. The creature was very tall, because she saw it when it was standing on its hind legs and was easily six feet tall. She indicated its torso looked very much like that of a very thin man and its head resembled a man almost with a pointy beard. However, the creature's hind legs were like a wild cat or dog. It was very muscular and thin, writes one source. The woman later shared her story with U.S. game and wildlife officials who insisted it must have been a feral dog or wolf but the woman was emphatic that the creature she saw was neither of the two. A few weeks following the woman's ordeal, livestock in the area around the location where the alleged incident took place began disappearing. Granted, this seems like a bizarre story that could easily be attributed to midnight AM talk radio and a case of some bad gas station coffee, however, it is interesting to note that only two decades earlier, just down I-81 in Smith County's Saltville, Virginia, various individuals claimed to have spotted nearly the exact same creature. I managed to track down this woman from Ohio, and she wasn't a person that would come up with some type of fantasy like this. In 1959, a couple driving down a back road in Saltville, Virginia, reportedly had their car attacked by a large, powerful creature they claimed chased their vehicle and left deep scratches along the door. According to their account, an ape-like beast attacked their car leaving three scratch marks on the vehicle. The couple's daughter described the terrifying attacker, it had light, taffy-colored hair, with a white blaze down its neck and underbelly, it stood on two, large well-muscled back legs and had shorter front legs or arms. A handful of years later, an almost exact same claim was made in the Smith County, Virginia community when two nurses from the Saltville area were driving home from work one morning and were attacked by an unknown creature who reportedly ripped the convertible top from their car. Luckily the nurses though surely frightened out of their wits were unharmed. The mysterious monkey-wolf hybrid beast would come to be known as the devil monkey and in the decades that followed, 
numerous alleged sightings of these animals were reported. In recent years, devil monkey sightings have waned, but from time to time, an occasional sighting of these mysterious creatures is quietly whispered about in corner barbershops. Here is where it's going to get a little strange, in a little town called Galax, Virginia. One of the founding fathers of the town, done very well for himself. He built a large house on the far side of town and even turned part of his land into a rather large zoo. Sometime in the 1920s the man had a heart attack, he was unable to care for the zoo. The large collection of animals escaped into the vast landscape of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Locals have found dens and other signs such as dropping and paw prints of exotic animals. A number of monkeys and wolves escaped from that zoo. So if nature found a way, it found a way. If you get my drift. Now that we're done with the monkey business let's move on to one of the things that still gives me chills. The Bunny Man. U.S. Air Force Academy Cadet Robert Bennett and his fiancée were driving home from a football game around midnight October 19, 1970 when they parked in a field off Guinea Road in Burke, Virginia, a town near Washington, D.C. Bennett was going to see if a relative was still awake, but they never got out of the car. As they sat with the motor running, something smashed into the front passenger window, showering them with glass. When they looked, a person dressed in a white bunny suit stood outside the shattered window, and shouted, You're on private property and I have your tag number, according to a 1970 article in the Washington Post. Bennett gunned the engine and sped away. The couple later discovered a strange hatchet inside the car, which they gave to police as evidence of the event. The bunny man was just getting started. Ten days after the Bennett attack, Paul Phillips, a security guard on a construction site, saw a man dressed in a grey and white bunny costume standing on the porch of a house under construction near Guinea Road. Phillips described the man as being in his early twenties, about 5 feet 8 inches tall, and 175 pounds, according to a paper by historian archivist Brian A. Conley of the Fairfax County, Virginia Public Library. When Phillips approached, the bunny man started chopping at the porch with an axe telling the guard, all you people trespass around here. If you don't get out of here, I'm going to bust you on the head. Police investigated, the Bennett and Phillips accounts, but were baffled. They were even more baffled at all the following reports more than 50 people saw the bunny man that year. Sightings allegedly continue, sometimes as far away as Maryland, but mostly around what has been dubbed Bunny Man Bridge in Virginia. As legend has it, the bunny man preys on drinking teenagers who hang out near the bridge, although evidence of anything really happening is non-existent. The legend claims the bunny man is an escapee of an insane asylum in 1904. This would make his over a 100 years. Take into account the bunny man is not a man in a suit, but a supernatural creature that is made from the dark corners tucked away in nightmares. As far back as the 1700s, Virginia residents claimed a giant reptilian bird would appear in the sky, and swoop down to attack pets, game, livestock, and sometimes children. Eyewitness descriptions of the creature sound like that of a pterosaur, an enormous flying monster with a wingspan of 25 to 30 feet, a long beak, and leathery skin that looks like a reptile. However, the creature also has tentacles, talons of steel, and carries with it the pungent scent of death. Its shriek resembles a train whistle. Don't let this fool you. Reports of this creature continued until the 1930s when they became sporadic, appearing again in 1948, and 1970 this was the year it packed itself into a bunny costume. The city's very own preacher held up his hand and placed the other on a Bible. And told my one night after church he was headed home and saw this thing perching on the old train tracks tentacles dangling and swaying back and forth. He laid on the horn and saw this thing, turn itself inside out and where the massive flying creature had been perching was a creature in a bunny suit. For years he refused to let the kids of Easter egg hunts at the church if anyone had won such a costume. After a few years, I started to see other reports. Reports of missing children, pets and livestock. Reports of men in bunny suits. Stay paranoid my friends.